All right, so I've got two rallies here. One I won and one uh, the other guy won. Uh, by the way, this match, I've lost this match. This guy's too good for me. He's too fast and um, too capable. But um, I picked one rally where I won and one rally where he won, and we'll talk through what my thoughts are and what I'm doing. Okay, so it's a pretty reasonable serve. It's come off the back wall enough. So what I want to do is push it across to his back end. I want to pitch it around about. I want to pitch it around about here somewhere, which is sort of level with his feet or maybe even across here, even a bit further. And so it then bounces up, comes across. So from here, I'll go across, that should be a line, sorry. I'll go across here, over there, it'll come across here, and then up, and then down towards the back wall. So there's the first shot, and that's what the brain says that we should be looking at. And I got it a little bit skinny, and hit the sidewall on the fall. So he's not really got a good body position, and I should be up further. I tend to hang back, hang back a little bit from playing too much racquetball. I think that'll be it. Okay, so he's done a right. I've chosen to go around behind him. All right, so from here, I've gone the drive, and the drive down the wall is to try and um, basically just change position with him. I've gone pretty hard to hit it quick, so he hasn't got the volley option, and I've sprayed it a little bit, so it's not the best drive, and it's finished a little bit short. Once again, he's gone back foot, holds his body structure, and he's pitched the ball relatively deep. Once again, I'll go down the wall, I think, and I'm basically trying to work it hard, and I've landed that one a little bit better, which means I can cut around in front, okay? So from here, I'm in trouble here, so I need to get a bit of height on this. And I haven't been able to lift it out, so the ball's been short. So what I was aiming to do was to swap positions, but his shot was really quite good. Okay, he's gone cross-court from here, and he's made me boast. All right, so now I'm in a little bit of trouble. I need to get back to the tee. I'm laying a drop, but he's let it. He's taken it really late. And by taking that late, he should have half volleyed that. But by taking it late, it just allows me all the time in the world to get up there and I'm going to put it down the wall and lift it up instead. I could have gone cross court, but the ball was reasonably tight. So I've lifted that up down the wall and cut back to the tee for a good position. Okay, so from here, he's pitched the ball relatively good, not too bad. I'm going to try and just play a short shot because his body motion is, is way back in the back court. And because he's back in the back court, like he's, he's nowhere near up near the front, like he's not up near the tee. So he's right back here on this line here. And so it's opened up the front court and it goes to his back end. People's back end is not necessarily the strongest. And you'll see his feet are split. So his feet are split in two different ways. His feet are split out this way. Once again, it should be a, a arrow. Um, his feet are split out this way and this way. So what that means is he's not going to be super fast. You watch his body. You see his body. See that turn, 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 turn. He's loaded up on his right leg. And if my shot was ever so slightly better, I would have been looking all right because he's only just got that. So he's only just managed to get that ball back, and that's because he hung back. And it just showed that, he, that it was an opportunity from here. Right, I want to go down the wall on this one, and I want to pitch the ball. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pitch it around about here. And I want to keep it hard and strong as well. So it depends how well you get onto it, and I haven't got onto it super, super well. And it's pitched reasonable, but it's not tight. So it's sort of come out a little bit. He's dug it out of there. And once again, I've gone for a boast. Once again, because he's hanging back. See how far back he is? He's just miles back. But my boast is not very good. And he's played a boast. So at least I'm up the court a little bit this time. This time. Okay, so now we should be looking at a lob or a scramble drop. And I think I'm in real trouble here, so I can only just get to the ball just get to it for a drop so that's a necessity shot a lob would have been far better but i just didn't have a body on the ball okay so he's gone down the wall i need to lift this up as high as i can to get as much time as possible so i can get back into a reasonable position on the court he's gone short and straight he didn't have that, that good a body on the ball but he's played a pretty reasonable shot because it's pretty tight almost and i've cut in on as early as i possibly can okay so we're going as early as I can. What I've done is it's taken him a little while to land. So we um, we can just have a look at that again, just quickly. All right, I'll go back a tad further. Okay. So what happens is, see how he's in the air? He hasn't landed his foot yet. He's still taking step, 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 step. 
because I've said well, and I can see that he's still over near the side. Well, I'm going to go hard and quick as quick as I can, take the ball as early as I can, and just put the ball over in the front forehand corner. Right, so he's gone and scrambled, and he's gone high to go and give himself some time. Now, this is the interesting shot, because most people will say down the wall is all that go, but he's really, really hooking across to get, a, to, get to this ball, so he's coming across as quick as he can. And I've cut across him. And see that turn? See how he's actually turned blind? And he's actually hooked around. If I'd played half a reasonable shot there, it's just such a difficult thing to do to get anything behind you. Um, but it's come off the back wall. And I should have been in a much better position once again. So once again, my feet are no good. I wasn't ready for the ball. I didn't think he was going to get it back. And I've just fended the ball off there. So now I'm in trouble. This, see, this guy's pretty fast for me. He's a bit too fast for me. So he's lifted up to get back in the rally now. So he's just reset his rally. And he's just gone and lifted up. So what I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm going to go and pitch the big area in the back of the court. So by lifting back here and tr hoping to hit the side wall. So to go up there and it'll come back and hit back here and then back here. So I can then take the centre court and then start to attack from there. So we we'll watch what happens. It goes around. And he's had to just scoop it out of there. And he's got a reasonable shot out of it. It's a good shot. And I've played a boast, which is not necessarily recommended. Once again, because he's staying back so far. And it's quite an attacking rally. And he, I've been, well, I'm not dictating play, but um, he hasn't been knocking me around as much. And I've knocked him around a little now, the cross-court drop is not a very good shot. I should be able to attack this with one big lunge and drive. So it's just a lunge and drive. So from here, I'm looking for down the backhand wall, and I want to attack the ball and hit it hard as early as I can. Big lunge, big drive, and big lunge, big drive, and just, just, just didn't get it deep enough. He scrambles it back with a reasonable half-court drive, and I'm once again still on the attack. So I'm looking at his feet, and we're not looking at his feet, but I, I know that if I put it forward, I can watch him, and he's not in a position where he's really, really going to be covering that because he's expecting stuff down the wall. It's not that good a drop shot. He's played the boast, which should open up the world for me. So from here, I should be able to do some really good stuff, and I should be able to put it away. And bang, off it goes. I've hit it too skinny, and he's played a nice little shot, and off it goes, and it's too much for me. So that's the mindset of what we're doing and, and why I play shots and how I choose to play shots. We have a look at another rally. Okay, so here's another rally. This is a little bit more interesting, because um, a little bit more fun because I won this one. Okay, so he's gone cross court, but it's not a very good shot and it's too low. I want to take the ball on the rise. And what I want to do is push him back to where he come from because people are not as strong in their backhand. It takes out all interaction. So if I go down the wall with this one, He's then going to run straight through me to get to the ball. So what happens, he's going to go through either this way, that way, or that way. And I've got to sort of cover off and get out of the way at the same time. But by going cross court, I can then double him back and take the front position really cleanly and really easily to his weaker side, or most people's weaker side, which is their back end. Okay, so the back end goes across here. It's quite low, so he's on a stretch and a reach, which means he does not have body on the ball. That's number number one thing you want. Okay, I need to take this relatively um, into a position where I can get it cross court. Once again, I'm going to try and bury it back in that back corner, so I can then take the front position and not have him come in on a forehand volley. So because he's not super, he hasn't got a, he hasn't got as many options in the backhand. So I pushed it deep. I should move up the court further, which I haven't. So he's pitched that relatively okay into the box. Should be slightly deeper. And I'll go deep and put it back where it came from once again. So that's a reasonable depth shot. And he flicked that out with a boast. And I've come up, tried to lob it because I wasn't on top of the ball. So I'm trying to gain time to get back into a reasonable court position here. Okay, so he shot his volley down the wall. It's pretty good. So it's not bad. And I'm going to try and take, because I can see that he's so deep. I can see him in my peripheral vision that he hasn't cleared overly well. So what I'm doing is I'm going to play a volley boast, which is a pretty tough shot. But um, what it, it doesn't have to be the world's best shot. It just has to drag him right up there. See how far back he is? So now he's just scrambling, 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 scrambling. And 
just gets it back. And this is that same situation. Now, most people would go down the wall. So what happens is, if I go down the wall here, if I go down the wall, he's, he's running straight back in this way into me to try and cut that off. I then have to go and peel back, peel back around and cut back around him. But if I can go cross court, remember his whole body motion, his whole drive is back this way. So everything's going this way. So that means that anything behind him is going to be open and it's going to be very hard for him to really quickly change direction. Remember, people generally will jump in the air or split virtually at the same time as you strike. So this is the same situation as before when I played that other cross court and it didn't work. So here, I'll go across and see his feet and he's turning and the ball's there, but he just can't get to it. So this one's hit the floor. Then the side wall is going up into the back corner. He's under major stress, still going towards the back wall, still going, still going, still going, still going, still going, still going, still going. So he hasn't even recovered. Now my aim is to take this as early as I possibly can. Just get it early, early and pop it in. I don't even have to play a good drop shot because it's just too hard. Yeah, so that's a little bit of an interesting one, the one with the cross court. So when the cross court comes, see here, this is a tough shot to play. But I've got a bit lucky. Um, this one here, you see he's under stress and it's going to take him a little bit to recover from there. So he's going to be late on recovery. So then he's going to have to be moving fast. I can't, I wanted to volley it, but I couldn't because he's pitching into the side wall. And it's just too easy to overhit these shots. So they come off the back wall and he gets back in the rally. Remember that if I hit the cross court, it binds in the back corner. So it promotes a boast. If I go down the wall, what that will do is it will open up his opportunity to um, get behind it because it then comes back towards the front wall. So it's a little bit of a funny one, but that there, it really hurts people and it continually hurts people and it's a lot of work. And that is just such an easy finish point that it's uh, um, just amazing. So the one that I got wrong last time um, didn't hurt me. It didn't knock me around and it did push him out and it made it difficult for him. But by going cross court, it just make, puts a fair bit of work into his legs at the same time to keep me, keeps me in the middle, takes out all interaction. And it's not a bad thing to do. All right, so there you go. That's the thought pattern of what uh, my brain goes through. And it, it works on just trying to work on your opponent's body. So I'll go back and we'll just play these these um, rallies at full pace. So you can then see it's a cross court. Didn't pitch it deep enough. Didn't pitch it deep enough. Got it deep enough there. He's played a great shot there, which has opened up an opportunity for him. And there's his opportunity, which he took it too late. I'm trying to get more time. There we go. Drops it in. That could have gone cross court. Would have been a great option. There's the boast. Good drive down the wall. He's really capable of his backhand volley. And there's the cross court that didn't work, but it really starts to knock him around, and that should have been better. I should have been able to finish it there. And off he goes, pushed him in the back corner again. Great shot from him. Opens up an opportunity there. And this is where he should have done better there. That should have been better. Once again, you can see that's a funny one because you see the, the return that he got. And this is that what that cross and this is that what that cross court does. It's the same theory is the cross court from the back. You watch your body motion, body motion, body motion, body motion. I only had to get it a fraction wider and that's a winner. Look, no body, no control, but he's just been, he's got enough talent and enough capability and it's a pretty good effort for him. It's a sensational effort. So it's a really good shot. So he's done really well with that. And here's the other alley. All right, he's a bit short on his cross court and I'm a bit short on mine. He's lifted it up. I've lifted it up, pushes it deep, I push him deep, reflex boast, hasn't got the drive deep well enough, here we go, that's the one that does the damage and that's just too easy, there it goes. Alright, so there you go, that is the um, game plan or one of the game plans which is an aggressive game plan. And it really does put some work into your opponent's legs. There's none of this um, continual rally down the wall, they are wrongly. So this is an aggressive, I like to play aggressive because I'm fast and a little bit wiry and whatever else. So I find that if I can get fit enough and I can um, basically push people around a little bit, then 
and um, I can create opportunity and so on. Problem is these young guys are just too fit, too strong, too fast and too capable, causing me a bit of grief. But um, anyway, it's really good fun to play this sort of um, aggressive game plan, but you don't have to do it all the time. You can choose to do it when you want to do it. So you can choose to sometimes play this sort of ga aggressive game plan and you can choose to other times just not play this aggressive game plan. Um, and go down the wall and, and consolidate a little bit. But if you sprinkle in these sort of rallies every now and then in your game, then it actually puts a fair bit of work into your opponent and it makes it really difficult for them. It's just not an easy thing for you to actually have to continually do these sort of movements relentlessly all the time. And there you go. All right, hope you enjoyed it.